Does adoption affect a person's chances of becoming a narcissist? And if so, why? That's what we're talking about today, queenbeing.com. Let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel, I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. Sound good? If so, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. All right, before I get started, I just want to tell you I'm answering a question from a viewer today. So let's take a look. Diana Gish said, most narcissist videos that I see relate to children who became narcissists due to parental behavior. Can you confirm the reverse, whether an adopted child fears abandonment more than a non-adopted child and whether a child will display a narcissistic behavior toward adoptive parents, much like spouses? Blaming, poorly handling truth, failure to acknowledge anything good has been done for them, or bonding. I'd like to see a video about this topic as well as one about children of narcissists, whether they have a higher likelihood to become narcissists, modeling their parents' behavior, etc. So you may or may not know this about me, but my husband, his name is Bill, he was actually adopted, but he was actually abandoned in a telephone booth in 1972. So we created this little blog a while back and here's the story. You know, he was born on or about June 6, 1972. Within 12 hours of that birth, he was found, we think, he was found by a passerby in a telephone booth at 7-Eleven at 4039 Metropolitan Avenue in Kansas City, Kansas on or around June 7th, 1972. We have found many article, a few articles about the situation, and he was supposed to have been in a foster home. We could not find the foster parents. He was adopted by his adoptive parents on June 20th, 1972, which, by the way, was technically illegal at that time because he should have waited for a year. Uh, anyway, his adoptive father passed away when he was 12. His adoptive mother continued to raise him. He has been very loved, and nothing we found was able to find the information so we're still searching pretty heavily I, I search on a regular basis for him so for that reason this particular question is very close to my heart that is a great question Diana so let's just start here when we're talking about adopted children we're talking about children who often are adopted at birth but not always so you would think that there would be no difference between an adopted child and a non adopted child but as it turns out there are several issues involved that birth children don't have usually. So when we're talking about adopted children, regardless of the details of the adoption, the age when the adoption happened, or whether or not they actually remember their birth family, a lot of adopted children feel a great sense of loss. Often they can't place it. When they feel that sense of loss, it's about losing the birth family even when they were placed with the adopted family at birth. Loss of their own culture might be an issue. So it, it, if there are transracial adoptions, sometimes this causes a, an even greater sense of loss. And they might not be able to see what they're dealing with until they reach adolescence or even adulthood. They can't really grieve appropriately until they understand the full issues. Now, those who are adopted from overseas often experience cultural issues as well. They feel like they, they don't even know how to speak the language they were born into and so it becomes more of an issue. Um, and so if they end up, you know, going through their parents' divorce or they're, you know, they lose a pet or they move or they switch schools, uh, any other sort of loss, somehow this de digs deep into their core wound that they were adopted. And, and you wouldn't think that would be an issue for adopted children, but apparently it is. Now, I'll tell you, my husband is adopted and he probably has some of these issues but the truth is he was adopted by a very loving you know accepting family and they have been you know they were very good to him growing up so I think that's part of the issue is that you know if you're if you're good to your child and you treat your child like a person they are less likely to develop psychological issues another thing a lot of these kids deal with is is in fact the fear of abandonment as you mentioned and of course it's a separate idea but they they kind of play out in a similar fashion so even when we understand that okay there was an adoption plan and and you know you were created you were brought to us we love you uh, our intent you know your your birth parents loved you that's why they created the adoption plan the adoptee doesn't always feel loved 
even when they should. Sometimes they'll find themselves feeling rejected or abandoned. Often they feel that they have been rejected or abandoned in the past even when they don't fully understand why and so they're always waiting for the other shoe to drop with the next person and that can cause them to be afraid to commit to a relationship so sometimes that means that they will spend their entire lives expecting to be abandoned by every single person that comes into their life this may be on a subconscious level and it can even affect their romantic partner and that relationship so they will test the relationship this is when I think we start to get into the emotional abuse stuff with adoptees where they may not even realize what they're doing or why they're doing it now sometimes you can heal that core wound I would not say that the majority of adopted children are narcissists I think that's not a fair statement because I think while the emotional pain could interfere with parent-child relationships, romantic relationships, friendships, everything, very often children are able to acclimate based on the way the parents raise them, but not always. Because again, a lot of this goes down to what they feel. So if they feel that they have been rejected or abandoned by the birth parent, whether it was true or not, this is when the emotional pain begins to interfere with the relationships in their lives. Now, therapy can help with this, and if you start early, it can help even more, but you don't always know that it's an issue because you might not realize it until the child does experience some sort of rejection in their lifetime. So if they're never bullied in school, they may not actually realize they have this feeling of rejection or abandonment until they're much older and like say they, they get dumped by their first girlfriend or first boyfriend. Another issue that adoptees face is figuring out what their identity is all about. So they don't know exactly how they fit into their family and therefore the world. So whether they know it or not, we, we all know that genetics seem to contribute quite a bit to who a person is, but nurture or, or the parenting also contributes a lot. So something to consider. As they go into adolescence, they start to see their identity crises come to life, right? So often they first define as teenagers who they are by choosing a particular group of, of students or other children to be friends with. They will then try to figure out what makes them different from those kids. And in the end, it comes to where they really have always felt different, is what a lot of adult adoptees tell you. They feel different. They always felt like they were out of place. They didn't belong there. And that is very, very difficult for anyone. Another thing they experience a lot of is guilt or shame, and that goes back to the rejection issue or the abandonment issue. They may actually feel ashamed of the idea that their parent gave them up for adoption. And this can lead them to feel guilty even when they shouldn't. So they often feel either that they've been adopted into a, a better situation and so they feel worried about their potential birth family what they were all about maybe they're living in poverty or maybe they fantasize that their birth family is rich and they are over here living in you know suburbia and and not rich just just getting by another thing um, intimacy can be an issue for them they often as adults will seek out counseling services but when they don't it's another issue so a lot of times it's not until our 20s or 30s that we like late 20s that we are neurologically able to fully process what we've been through if we've got, been adopted and so they like I said they struggle with the identity they worry about being rejected and abandoned all of these things so it's kind of interesting the way it all kind of plays out a lot of people who have been adopted also feel the need to control everything and that obviously can lend to the potential for narcissism as can fear so children who don't look like anyone else in the house or you know don't understand what's going on they may just be afraid and they can then act out when they don't get what they want all of this could potentially lend to narcissism but I do not personally think that it's necessarily something that would occur repeatedly um, and I would not say that it's more often than in any other family because again the way that you process the way that you deal with it is part of the issue and how how you choose to handle the things that happen to you in your life and how you're taught to handle those things or not.
Of course, with all of that being said, let's take a look at this article from Lee Daniel Hughes. So he's talking about adoption, narcissism, and psychopathy. And what it comes down to is that narcissism, ASPD, psychopathy, etc., we all know they have their origins in early childhood. We've done videos on this before. Um, but apart from biological factors, they say that narcissism and psychopathy stem from an unstable, dysfunctional parental relationship in a child's first years. And obviously, they say that the issue becomes more complicated when the child's an adoptee or a foster child. And I found this very interesting. And, and you know, you can look at this article, I'll link out to it in the comments uh, in the description below, but um, I just want to point out to this one thing here though, and it, it points that many adopted children do develop normally, an alarmingly disproportionate number of them, however, develop psychological disorders like narcissism and extreme cases, psychopathy. They say a closer look at the prison population and the biographies of notorious serial killers tell us a different story. And they say that uh, most, they say many of the notorious serial killers were adopted children and the proportion of adoptees in the prison population and violent offenders is as much as five times higher than their proportion of the general population. I found this very interesting. And he says the fact that adoptees feature so disproportionately in crime statistics is highly revealing, as well as an indictment of how badly this issue is downplayed. Now they say there are two contributing factors here. They say that because adopted children are severed from the biological mother, this does a, a damage to the baby and had obviously been previously downplayed. They say lacking a mother's warmth is a huge blow to the infant's needs and make it more likely that they will become self-absorbed or worse if not remedied quickly. So they say from the beginning they're psychologically fragile. Now my thing is why would they not, if they're being adopted, are they not being adopted by people who are giving them a mother's warmth? Because a mother obviously gives birth, but also there are plenty of mothers in my life, like my husband's mother who has now passed away. She gave him plenty of parental mother warmth, you know, so I think that's a, th a thing. But then they, they point out the psychology of the adopting parents themselves. Like what is their motive for wanting the child? And you know, and I think this is what it all comes down to right here. This factor cannot be emphasized strongly enough and can make the difference between a well-adjusted adoptee and a maladjusted one. Adopting parents who want a child for the sake of their own vanity, such as to fill a void in their life or as a source of love, are running the risk of making the adoptee's psychology more dysfunctional and making the likelihood of the child developing narcissistic or psychopathic traits all the more certain. So they say that narcissistic parents and parenting makes the child feel like they are looking after two adult children. Such parents do not really love their adopted children. They need them as a form of narcissistic supply. So a parent to be who already has NPD is the last person who should be responsible for the upbringing of an adoptee. As a result, the adoptee's psychology becomes even more self-centered and narcissistic, the worst possible result. So if the child is not given a proper moral grounding either, the child can even develop into a psychopath. Okay, and then it goes on to talk about a bunch of other things. So I found that very interesting given your question and I wanted to share that. I don't know about you, but I find that topic very fascinating. Now, what do you think? It's time for the question of the day. And the question of the day is what do you think about all that? Do you think that the research that man did is correct and that some adopted children have a higher risk of becoming narcissists? Do you think like I do that nurture matters a lot in these situations? Let me know, share your thoughts and your comments below in the comment section, all right? And watch for tomorrow when I'll answer your other question in a video on how narcissist parents affect their children. Subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified. That's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life and hey, Thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.